delighted to be here today to talk about the prompt uh, shoulder stosia training. Uh, Kathy, one of our research midwives, and I are going to go through the manoeuvres today. So to try and illustrate for you how best to manage shoulder stosia condition we all know is unpreventable, therefore we just need to be able to manage it as best we can. So Kathy, I wonder if we could get straight on uh, with the manoeuvres. Mm -hmm. One of the things about shoulder dystocia I always think is it's a bony problem. And I always use the analogy of it's like a truck going through a low bridge. So can you imagine the cab of the truck gets through the bridge, but the back of the truck bangs up against the bridge. So can you see the cab is like the baby's head and can you see the shoulder is stuck behind the pubic symphysis. So it's a bony problem. Just pulling the cab through the bridge is going to damage either the truck or the bridge. So the first thing, Cathy, I wonder if we could try is diagnostic traction. So the key issue here is you need to know there's an impaction. And it's really important, just as Cathy's doing, to pull in the direction of the spine, axial traction. Now, I think when we were young, people definitely used to pull right down, they used to crouch down to try and pull the truck underneath the bridge. Well, we know now that that's more damaging. So just see, is it coming, yes or no? Okay. The first thing then to do is call for help. You need the team around you, you're going to need a person for each leg from Roberts, and we're definitely going to need someone to do superior pressure as well as the person uh, looking after the baby's head. Now, First thing, call for help. Second thing, let's do McRoberts. So, so McRoberts, if you can imagine the bridge is tilted slightly forward, then making the bridge vertical makes uh, the arch higher. The woman's the same size, but it just helps you get the shoulders, the truck through the bridge. So, so Kathy. So I've pulled mum down the bed. Yep. Okay, and then I'm going to make her flat, and then I'm going to take her legs right back so her sides are against her abdomen and that lifts the bottom off the bed okay and I'll need somebody both sides so that we're both supporting the legs. So once the bottom's off the bed just as Kathy you said then I think that shows you've got McRoberts in the right position. The second thing is if you do suprapubic pressure that presses down on the anterior shoulder. That's it perfectly and I think like a CPR, CPR position and can you imagine you need to push down on the truck, not the bridge. So Kathy's now pushing down and across to get the shoulders slightly in the oblique, so down and in the oblique if you can. So if that is unsuccessful, we need to move to internal manoeuvres. Just to give you an illustration again using the truck and bridge analogy, can you imagine the bridge is like a heart shape. If you could rotate the shoulders into the two o'clock or 10 o'clock, you've got more space to run through the bridge. However, if you can deliver the post to your arm, that's like taking the wheels off the truck, it drops it down 10% and you can run it through the bridge. So Cathy, I wonder if we could kind of attempt those thi two things. So if I'm going to do an internal manoeuvre, I need to put my hand scrunched up, we call it the Pringle manoeuvre, so that's as if you were getting the last Pringle out of the carton. Um, and I'm putting my whole hand in at the base, so at six o'clock, not leaving my thumb out, I'm putting the whole hand in with the aim that I'm going to find the posterior arm. Babies often come down the birth canal like, like pharaohs, and so you can grasp that posterior arm and just deliver it straight up, just like you were putting your arm up in class. The idea of that is that the baby's now one arm's width narrower, and so that anterior shoulder should drop underneath the pubic arch and you can deliver the baby. Um, any traction I do would be in an axial direction. So never downwards, but axial as if you're pulling along. And in this instance, we would deliver the baby. Great. So, so let's say that delivers a baby for this one, but, but some babies, the arm is straight and you can't deliver the posterior arm very easily. And I always think, going back to the analogy, imagine the bridge is like a heart shape. Then can you imagine if you could rotate the back of the truck to either 10 o'clock or two o'clock, there's more room than there is at 12 o'clock. Okay, so this time I'm putting my whole hand in again and I put my hand in at the bottom and this time I can't feel a posterior arm and therefore all I can feel is the shoulders. So I'm going to aim to rotate the shoulders. So I will push on the front of the bottom shoulder and I'll ask an assistant 
to do superpute pressure towards that wall. So as we do that, we're rotating those shoulders into the oblique and the shoulder is released and comes under the pubic arch. And it still may be worth trying some diagnostic traction to make sure that's released. Now, those manoeuvres in themselves seem to be effective, certainly in the last series we published of 17,500 consecutive vaginal births, no further manoeuvres were required. And I think it's important we do the manoeuvres that we know as well as we can do. This is the RCOG algorithm, which lists all of the manoeuvres that we've just demonstrated here now. You can see that you take step-by-step -step approach to the manoeuvres. Mm -hmm. If you get to the bottom and you've found that they haven't worked, it recommends you go back to the start and start with the McRoberts manoeuvre again. So take the legs out and put them back in. It may be appropriate if the mother's mobile to put her onto all fours position because just the movement into all fours may be helpful at releasing the shoulders. Mm -hmm. We also have documentation and this is the RCOG Proforma for documenting um, each manoeuvre so that it's very clear after the event what actions were taken. If you'd like to learn more about how prompt training can improve care on your labour ward or to sign up for our courses, please visit www.promptmaternity.org or email us on info at promptmaternity.org.